Governor Bailu Matawale of Zamfara State dares EFCC to go after President Buhari's cabinet members. And Labour Party factions clash at presidential tribunal as embattled national chairman Lamidia Papa claims Peter Obi and Julius Sabure sponsored thugs against him. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Governor Bailu Matawale of Zamfara State has urged the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to go after officials of the presidency and members of the outgoing, outgoing Federal Executive Council. Matawale stated this while reacting to a statement credited to Abdul Rashid Bawa, the chairman of the Anti-Graft Agency, that, with the EFCC, that the EFCC had sent various invitations to all outgoing governors and commissioners in a bid to commence investigation. He said such a probe should not be limited to outgoing governors and commissioners, but those working at the presidential villa as well. Masawale also urged the EFCC chairman to ensure that the investigation is not politicized and that all those who were found to be involved in corruption we're brought to justice. Joining us to discuss this is Bjorn Shomi, he's a political analyst and a veteran journalist. Also joining us is Tunji Abdulhamid, a legal practitioner and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Great. Uh, Mr. Shomi, I'll start with you. Um, when t things like this are being said, especially uh, from a person uh, like Governor Belo Matawale, um, most people would, would want to shoot the messenger um, and not take the message. Should this be the other way around? Listen to the message and the messenger, maybe in this, in this case? Um, yes, if you, if you have to look at the issue carefully, um, depending on how you want to view it, um, in this case, the message, the messenger, and the message are both important. Um, I will tell you, in the first instance, um, a governor like Matawale, San Papara State, only controls 0.78 percent, you know, of federal allocation, whereas the federal government uh, controls 52.68 percent of um, um, federal allocation. So, given that situation where the 36 state governments are only controlling 26% plus uh, derivation, those entitled to derivation, which Matawale, Sanfara State, uh, is not entitled to. So it's only controlling 0.78%, less than 1% of the budget. So it's important also uh, uh, to focus on uh, what happened to the agency, you know, the coordinating government that controls 52.68% of the national budget, though so that's quite very important also. Um, on the issue of um, Matawale in person, um, even if there are indictments, even if there are suspicion that there are um, fraudulent transactions at the federal level of uh, federal government officials who are, or ministers who are involved in one act of corruption or the other, the fact of the matter is it's not a defense for Matawale in his own case. In his own case, he needs to be getting his papers when he gets prepared, you know, to uh, respond to questions by the EFCC. <clears throat> it will never be a defense for a chief or somebody at a late chief, you know, to say that uh, the police arrested me. Uh, why would they arrest me alone? Why not arrest other chiefs? So that will never be a defense. Um, but the way the issue is currently, Matawale has a very strong point in saying that, look, I only... Even though he has not said it clearly in that form, uh, he's only controlling a, min a minute part of the federal allocation, whereas um, the federal government controls 52.68%. So it's important we take corruption seriously, and corruption must not, you know, have a, a kind face to, to, to authorities, no matter how highly pleased the person is. We have seen how governments have impact on reckless borrowing and paying a trillion naira in under 40 days, you know, budgeting a trillion naira for roads and all that. Uh, all, all these things should be carefully looked at. I'm not suggesting anybody, um, any minister was involved in or has been involved in corruption. But what we are saying is that all this late expenditure also needs to be um, properly scrutinized by the EFCC to make sure that everything is fine. 
Otherwise, we are in serious trouble given the scale of the debt which we have in our country currently. Mm. Tunji, let me come to you. Um, uh, under the Buhari administration, one of the key factors or the key um, things that the president um, campaigned on in 2015 was to fight corruption, one of the things that were topped here. Uh, and now looking back at it, uh, almost eight years later, can we really say that the president has dealt with the issue of corruption? And looking at it from the position of the Zamfara state governor saying that the same invitation that the EFCC is extending to them um, should be extended to members of Mr. President's cabinet, being that he is supposed to be the poster child of anti-corruption. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, for, for me, the president has not uh, 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 met his, uh, my expectation regarding the fight against corruption. He promised us that uh, he will fight corruption. But for me, there was no fight against corruption. I rather see the president towing the line of the former uh, uh, government, whereby they, they go after those who are against the party or against them or, or criticizing their government. Uh, most of the people in their cabinet who have been alleged of corruption, or most of the people in their party who have been alleged of corruption, are not being dealt with. And even some people who are not even their party, who are, who are, who are FIP or FIP, have been treated with a, a, a glove a, a kids. So I, I think for me, Rather than fight corruption, where the president did not even uh, do much in that, in, that, in that regard, there are, there are a lot of uh, compromise, there are a lot of uh, issues. If, and, uh, to, to, to that extent, I want to agree with the uh, uh, governor of uh, San Francisco State, Matawali, that uh, the, the EFCC should not focus only on the governors or the states. The federals are there, and it's been, it been a practice all this while. Governors have been the target always. Most times, uh, ministers and the other people who work uh, with the presidency or the, at the federal level, are often uh, left out of the uh, probing or investigation. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of, uh, if, if a letter has been written to governors or commissioners to come and uh, the outgoing governors or, 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 or commissioners, they seem to be extended uh, uh, to the ministers and those who have worked with the president. Because uh, for me, even that is a, uh, there are so, so many ministries where there are a lot of allegations of corruption. For instance, uh, the humanitarian, humanitarian the, the ministry, there are a lot of issues regarding uh, feeding a, uh, of students in school and all those things. They are issues of uh, uh, billions of naira being used to even just, uh, 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 what's it called, this affiliation, uh, uh, Nigeria's uh, affiliation, affiliation. In other words, we want to have our own uh, flight. I can't remember, I want to remember the, the logo, to launch the logo of the of, of Nigeria uh, here. Up to date, we did not see anything, and nothing has happened. So many issues of uh, uh, corrupt practices the, uh, within the people who are the, uh, in this uh, government. I remember a, a minister who claimed to that uh, he was uh, given a 50 billion naira for the purpose of uh, uh, this uh, job for three months. I know I, I don't know anything about those jobs. Those, there are issues that need to be probed, that we need to move, get more information regarding them. You know, you remember the Minister of Work at the uh, of State, uh, that, that this uh, program he introduced, and 50 billion was uh, approved. Today, I'm not, I'm not aware what what come out, uh, out of that uh, uh, program uh, in terms of uh, they are giving three uh, people three months a uh, job or whatever they will be giving twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollar monthly. I can't uh, I can't even if you ask me I don't know what has happened to it. So I to an extent I want to agree with uh, uh, Matawali that uh, look if you are extending any probe to the governors or the commissioners, seems to be extended to the people within the presidency or the federal level. And in that regard, it will be, be seen as being fair and not being against people. Because most people, and most times, they, if the police uh, the, and the security agency, they see themselves as part of the federal government, not even the, the and they want to be, that they have been seen most times as, as being used against people, uh, against uh, people in the state, particularly those who are not in, in line with uh, the federal, most times, that's what I've been seeing. To be seen as a, as a fair agency or security agency who is fighting corruption, there should be, it, should be, it should be done without fear or favor, without any, they must, they must apply a, a, a blind a fold, a fold, a folded approach in that regard. Not that we don't even know who is who's concerned. Just fight your own corruption and let, let's, let's see what is happening there. So to an extent, like I said again, I, I, I agree with him. That, but like a, I want to agree with my brother that uh, it is not an excuse for Matawali to say because uh, those at the federal have not been uh, punished or have not been invited. Therefore, his own case should also not be treated as such. No, in other words, you face your case, and then you can also advise them to also go after other people. Other people. So, I, I want to advise the EFC to, to use to that advice and also extend their invitation to former ministers. I'm trying to wrap my head 
I remember most of the uh, either past or present uh, ministers and uh, the past ministers that have been invited for query after election. What are after after their, their tenure? Most most times we hear about governance, but most times we don't hear about about ministers. We hear only about governance. We don't hear most times about the about the minister. We hear about commissioners. Most times we don't, we don't hear about people at the president. Even to me, the president is not that. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not accepted from being invited for query because there are issues that to the president. Hmm. But if you call out the minister now, you are investigating them. Most of them would, would say this was approved by the president. By, by the president. So if the president approved an issue, he need to be investigated and ask questions. Or that what happened to this? What happened to this money you approved? And so okay. uh, for me, it is not going to be. It's not only be. A governor or commissioner being invited. Those are the federal level as well to be invited. So I want to agree totally with you. Okay. Um, Mr. Shomi, let me come back to you. Let's talk about governors now. Um, how careful have governors been uh, in the past seven plus years in terms of how they approve funds, how these funds are, sp uh, are spent, um, who follows the money, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take, for example, I mean, because, you know, these governors, just like presidents, also hide under the umbrella of immunity. But then that immunity ends the moment, you know, you step down as governor. But let's take, for example, the governor of Cross River State, who um, in the past seven plus years has... Um, you know, given audio promises, and when you go to ground, you see absolutely nothing. And recently, he he, he um, alluded to the fact that paying of salaries was an achievement of sorts in seven plus years. And these are people who have had had their assemblies approve billions and trillions of naira, but nothing to show up for it. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, should this not be detail for every single governor across the country, and even the previous ones before now? Oh, yes. Um, we, we are in a serious problem in Nigeria. We have a situation where those who are supposed to carry out oversight functions over the executive are failing to do so. Um, if you take, for instance, the issue of uh, loans, uh, the National Assembly kept up with loans for Mr. President until we ran into big trouble paying back now. The same thing has happened in the States. They kept up moving it. And uh, the state government kept taking loans until when they can no longer afford to pay salaries. And those who are paying salaries are seeing it as a big achievement. Now, the crucial issue is uh, the issue of development. What happens to the capital votes? Because billions of billions of naira are voted on a monthly, you know, on an annual basis, you know, in the state budgets for capital expenditure. How come, like um, the example you gave in relation to uh, cross river state, that uh, not much is seen for uh, appropriated funds. Were the funds released or not? Because it's one thing to appropriate, it's another thing you know, to back it up with cash. Um, at times there's paucity of funds. So that is all the more reason why there has to be a proper pool of uh, many of those um, states that fail to, 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 um, to have much to show for money appropriated. Because that is the way to start. You have to start from the worst ones, uh, since I don't think the EFCC have the resources, including the ICPC, you know, to cover uh, the current ones, not to talk about going into the past. So we have to look at the worst situations, pull them out, at least to first draw out a point that when money is appropriated for capital, project, you must have something to show for it. Otherwise, uh, we would um, pull you up. That is one part, because that, that's an aspect of its management. The other part is corruption. Did you personally benefit, you know, from the contracts awarded? Um, have you been able to, through your cronies, you know, accumulate uh, capital against uh, the, the provisions of the law or in an illegal way? These are issues which need to be dealt with. Nobody would deny the fact that the states are stinking. So also is the federal stinking, um, the reeking of corruption. We all know that. I remembered. A minister was, uh, the acts of rest was probing a minister over some billions, and suddenly the whole thing went dead. Um, we've not heard anything about it um, since then. And it's not the only one. I know that um, uh, one or two other ministers are being pulled up currently. Um, they, they are being asked to, to make themselves available at the end of the regime. Okay, fine. So be it. But the fact of the matter is, we need to do an overall comprehensive assessment of projects. Why were these projects not executed or partly executed? Uh, what happened to the funds appropriated for it? And 
then we now focus on individual. The deal gain materially, you know, from public projects or rather uh, or, or through your cronies, or did you have any links with those companies, you know, executing those projects? So, mm. because that is the major way in which uh, money are fleeced without being traced to either the governors or the ministers or anybody. They use their cronies. So, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. I know that about it. But we can start from the worst ones, like the one you give example of, uh, Cross River State, where you start from the worst ones to say, look, let us agree on something. You cannot appropriate a uh, capital vote, and then you have nothing to show for it. There must be something to show for it. Some money was released to you. What did you spend it on? So I think that's the way to go currently. Uh, Tunji, it's interesting, um, Mr. Shomi is saying that, you know, there needs to be some accountability, the watchdogs, and then that's where the ICPC and the EFCC, most importantly, comes in. But how can we really fight, you know, um, corruption in this country if these same institutions are seen as an appendage or um, a, an attack dog of whatever government is in power? And then, of course, just like Matawali right at, uh, rightly pointed, that they pick and choose or selectively decide who they want to probe or who they want to, you know, deal with as a result of the, the fight against corruption. Do we really have an anti-corruption war in this country and how viable is it? Uh, to me, I, I, I won't say we have, uh, we have we have a tendency fighting corruption, but whether they are fighting it or not, it's a different uh, uh, kettle of, uh, uh, it's a different bargain. Uh, for me, they are not fighting it the way it should be fought. They are not doing the right thing. That's right from the, the battle regime. In fact, I remember the Basanjo, the former Baba Basanjo, the former president, who was accused of uh, using the battle to fight the political enemies. And, uh, and that the same has continued to date. Most of uh, during the, uh, the, the, the woman uh, was Kwasiri or something. I can't remember the, uh, the, the first name again. Farida Wasiri, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, the same thing happened. The, 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 the immediate past, uh, uh, same thing. This one too. So at most times, these these agencies are often used to attack people in the state, not the federal. I'm, I'm, I'm still cracking my racking my head to remember five or four ministers that has been there, that, that, that has been investigated by the, by by, by EFC. I am aware that that there yeah, is allegation against the minister of uh, attorney general and the uh, minister of justice regarding the consultancy fee being paid to certain, certain lawyers and certain people, and it's being think that that allegation against the finance minister. I'm not hearing EFC trying to make any effort to say. We want to invite them to, to question them. So you see, see, with this fight of corruption, it's not seen as being fought because those who are supposed to fight it are, 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 are biased. They, they, they are being seen as, just like you said, they, are, they see themselves as appendages of, uh, of, of, of the government. In other words, whoever the, the president or the, the president or what wants to deal with is whoever they go after. And they, 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 they won't. So if you, if you truly want to fight corruption, they, whether you are in my party, whether you are from my state, whether you are from my religion or whatever, we should ignore those areas and then fight it as it is. Don't look at anybody. Don't look at the face of anybody. Don't say this is because this is a, a, a party man. And then you will use a party. You can remember the Babati Lawa, though I know I'm aware the matter is in court, but what is going on in it? Nothing. And that, that, that's the way they, they will only maintain. They will, most times, they will just fight case in court and then abandon it there for the purpose of a, a public, a, a, so that public will not say they do not charge them to court. So if we are not sincere with our fight against corruption, we can't get done right. We can't do it rightly. The corruption will continue to, 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 to be there because we seem to have, uh, agree to allow people to fight corruption. You see, we, 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 we talk about, uh, we talk about uh, those who are supposed to checkmate them and not doing the right. Yeah, they are not doing because uh, we in Nigeria too, we are not even expecting them to do it. And remember when uh, Dr. Kwasan Adu was the president, when he was checkmating the request of the president regarding loan and all these things. And people were shouting at him and saying it's, 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 it's a clog. On the progress of the of, 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 of the of the government, but today they now see the difference between that those area. We were, we, we, if if uh, I do and allow those uh, approvals to have gone that time, probably the, our, our debt will even be over hundred billion, uh, billion dollars, trillion dollars now today. Then because he, he was asking them provide details of the of, of, of loan you want to acquire, what you want to do with it, they will not provide it. They will not approve. People will say it's, it's, it's blocking the government. It's fighting the government. You don't allow the government to progress. So that's why those people are also fight. Are not fighting. And that's why you see the one there now say, "I will do whatever the president wants to do. I will be. I will align with the president, and I, I will work together and do whatever he wants to do." And that's why you see no being approved. Even before a uh, loan being taken, even before approval, you see loan being money being collected for uh, uh, for, for uh, spent without appropriation and all those things. And it's going on. And same thing may likely happen here under this regime because it's a where whereby. The president will be the one to, to anoint 
president, 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 they you don't expect any 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 proper check and balances. There mm. won't be mm. because they would definitely have to react to the president, not to the, not to the country. And that has been our problem. The reality is that is always to the president. The reality is always to the to the people. Uh, uh, party, party party loyalty is all, all, all I want to be doing. So rather than, than country uh, loyalty. So if you are if you appoint me and most people in this in this country once they once they are appointed by or supported by a particular person or, or whatever, they are loyal to that, to that person. Whatever okay. they want to get, they give it to him. And that's why you don't see the check and balances and that's why the corruption is, is, is growing every day. Mm. Because uh, they are all part of the corruption. And uh, so if the government if the incoming government wants to fight corruption, it should do away with those such such uh, 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 practice whereby you want to just get anything done at all costs and then make sure that this is all you allow party interest to override your 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 your, your, your work. So if you want to do well, we need to we need to close our eyes and blind our, our eyes to party interest, okay. ethnic interest okay. or whatever interest that we have. So otherwise we'll continue to be well what we think. Um, Mr. Shomi, back to you. Let's go back to Mr. President and the presidency. Transparency International in 2022 furnished us with some inf information about, uh, uh, in fact, some people would call it evidence uh, that um, despite the um, resolution by Mr. President to fight corruption, um, corruption is still waxing strong under his government. In fact, uh, the newly released uh, 2022 Corruption Perception Index um, had ranked Nigeria in 2022 amongst the most corrupt jurisdictions in the world. Um, and for so many people, this is not necessarily surprising. And for others, they cannot believe it. Even Mr. President had come out to say that, oh, well, uh, it's not about the positioning. It's about the fact that when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. But there are those who also, political pundits, who have said that Mr. President's uh, administration was mostly marred by um, chronism and nepotism. And this, just as Tunji has said, has been a clog in the wheel of things, you know, turning around. And many people actually uh, had hope, high hopes for Mr. President. What do you think the major issue has been, um, or what has been the major downfall of the Bahari administration? Yes, um, the president got overwhelmed at a point on the battle against um, corruption. He started well, and I be believe that he meant well. But along the line, he found himself having to work, um, having to trust people who, in any case, should really be under investigation. And he had little uh, other options. He, if you look at his personal construct, um, he, he, he prefers um, old relationship people who had who he knew personally you know to work with um yet many people have called it uh, nepotism which in many cases i have no doubt it is when you behave in that way <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is he made some strides some uh, some good um, uh, 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 some, some good achievements but at the same time we have very terrible ones for instance uh, on corruption, it failed absolutely, in my view. On security, the security situation, even though it degraded the capability of Boko Haram, but at the end of the day, he ended up with banditry when Boko Haram mutated uh, from occupy, occupying local governments into spreading into tiny cells in different parts of the north, which he has not been able you know, to take till today. So there are so many, then the public perception of the regime is also not too good. Um, there are a lot of things that went wrong. People felt it was not sympathetic, you know, to the plight of the people, particularly the farmers, when they were faced with uh, the nomadic herders um, destroying their farms and all that. So there are a lot of problems left, right, and center, which Mr. President himself said he's happy to leave the state now and um, allow other people to sort the problem out. Um, he got overwhelmed, in my view, at a point in time. Um, you know, they say that um, nobody really understands where the shoe pinches except to wear it. Uh, and I'm guessing that Mr. President didn't know exactly what he was coming in for or what he was going in for when he was campaigning. He knew what some of the problems were. But again, how are you overwhelmed if you had planned, if you had a roadmap? Many people are saying that one of the major problems of Mr. President and the APC-led administration was they had no plan. They just wanted to take over. Do you agree? No. You see, Buhari had been the, best, the head of state of this country in the past, so he knew exactly the challenges. He knew the complexity of the Nigerian situation. What I think <clears throat> he didn't factor in 
uh, is the fact that he ruled the country as head of state under military and under civil, civil, civilian rule, it's going to be a, a totally different game. You can't just order that people should be locked up. They will take you to court on fundamental human rights. Under military regime, fundamental human rights is the first aspect of the constitution that are normally suspended by any military regime. So therefore, it is easier for them to abuse people, abuse people's rights, get people locked up, rightly or wrongly. Uh, he thought he would be able to do that. When he came in, he realized that the experience he had as a military head of state is totally different from his experience um, um, in the civilian dispensation. So uh, I think that is precisely what he got wrong. He can't even order things to be done you know, the way he would under the military. Then the other problem he had was because he was widely seen, you know, the military was widely seen, you know, to be abusing uh, people's rights. Um, the Americans and the Europeans refused to sell arms at a point in time to that administration until the second um, uh, tenure uh, uh, for, for, for reasons of uh, suspected abuses of, uh, uh, of human rights. So, he, he has his own problems, and by the time he was able to adjust in the second term, um, some people just felt, yes, this is the time. We can just go on spending spree, um, because the president is now, you know, conforming with the dictates of a uh, civil dispensation. Mm. Okay. Tunji, finally, let me come to you. The president had said, he was quoted to say, that he's proud to be living behind a legacy uh, of fighting corruption. Um, and and, and as, as we all know, the president is very excited. Um, he's eagerly looking forward to when he goes back to Daura. Um, and he has said he's tried his best for Nigerians, even though um, you uh, and some other people are saying that you've not seen exactly what he's really done. Um, could the president be really leaving in some sort of blissful ignorance or for him he's done his best yeah, for, for him he may have done his best but for me his best is not good enough and if you if, as, a, as a student if you do an exam and we say your best your, 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 your best is not good enough that means you did not pass that means you have failed and so as far for me the president has failed I'm not, and i'm not surprised because uh, uh I, with due respect uh, for me, I think uh, Mr. President was not prepared to, to, to become uh, to be just to, to come and be called Mr. President. He, he was not prepared to come and solve to come and solve to, uh, uh, problems of the country. He may be aware of the problems, but he was not even prepared. He was not prepared for that. He has no solution to all the all our problems. He was just there as Emir or King or Oba that would just sit down and say, "I am in my palace and nothing." He doesn't. That that style of the president shows that he was not prepared to solve problems. There yeah. will be problems, and the president will sit down and say, "I am not the priest for days, for months." You see a president who will not even address his people. You okay. see a president who will not address political issues until he, went ab he goes, goes abroad. Okay. You see a president who where things will be happening and will be pretend that he doesn't know. And you will see president where people are being killed or he's being even though people are being alleged, people within his cabinet are being alleged of corruption and nothing will be nothing will happen to them and they will see their, their position. Okay. You see a, a president by a minister under his reign, there will be strife for eight, seven months or six months, nothing will happen to that minister. And the president will see me dead. So for me, the president is satisfied being achieving his aim of become of becoming the president of the country, being called Mr. President. Okay. Not about, it's not he don't achieve the aim of come and solve any problem. Anyway, I don't I don't know whether he has that uh, uh, magic okay. to solve the political. All right. I don't, I don't know whether he has he has the capacity in that because I don't show it to me. All right. As far as I'm concerned. So and the president going and uh, happy, happy going on. I, I think he, for me he not, it's not for fee. Because okay. I don't know the right part I'm concerned. So All that's right. My, that's my well, I want to say thank you. Biodu Shomi is a political analyst and a veteran journalist. Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with yeah. us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing the clash among factions of the Labour Party at the Presidential Tribunal in Abuja. Stay with us.